innovation at the intersection of AI and sustainability, Tesla's approach. So this is going to be a discussion of Tesla's efforts to reduce its environmental impact, sure, including its use of renewable energy sources and sustainable materials, sure, but there's more to it at the end. I'm Brian. Welcome to my Tesla weekend. As a reminder, this is the full version that goes out on Friday at 7 p.m. on the second channel, My Tesla Live. Or it's the condensed one, it's whichever one's on the screen. Tesla is a company that's committed to reducing its environmental impact and promoting sustainable transportation. And here are some of the ways that Tesla is working to achieve this goal. It includes using renewable energy sources. So they've made a commitment to using renewables to power its operations, including manufacturing showroom superchargers all that. The company's installed solar panels on many of its facilities, including its gigafactories, uh, to generate clean, renewable power. Developing electric vehicles itself. Yeah, Tesla's primary focus is on producing electric vehicles, which do not produce any emissions while being driven. In contrast, traditional gasoline-powered vehicles release greenhouse gases into the atmosphere, contributing to climate change. Investing in sustainable materials. So Tesla's working to reduce its use of materials that are harmful to the environment, such as single-use plastics. The company's also investing in research and development to find sustainable alternatives to traditional materials, like using recycled aluminum in its vehicles. Promoting sustainable transportation. Yeah, Tesla is actively promoting the use of electric vehicles as a more sustainable form of transportation. So the company has also developed its own network of superchargers, you know that, which allow Tesla drivers to quickly and easily recharge. So overall, uh, Tesla's making a number of steps to reduce its environmental impact and promote sustainable transportation. Yeah, uh, these efforts are an important part of the company's overall mission to accelerate the transition to a cleaner, more sustainable future. So I, I know what you're thinking. You're like, oh, that's all interesting. That's all interesting. It's not super, it's not super groundbreaking. So what I actually wanted to explain is that while Tesla is an interesting topic, the real news is about sustainability in terms of human resource, the human labor pool. AI is able to do our jobs. So AI artificial intelligence, is a rapidly evolving field that is having a major impact on many different industries and sectors. One of the most significant ways that AI is transforming the world is by taking on tasks that were previously done by humans. So while Tesla is certainly an interesting and important topic, it is important to recognize that AI is capable of doing a wide range of tasks that were previously done by me. For example, AI can analyze data, make decisions, and perform tasks including customer service, data entry, and even driving. Mm. So the use of AI in the workforce has the potential to bring about significant changes, positive and negative. On the one hand, AI can increase efficiency, reduce costs, and free up human workers to focus on more complex and creative tasks. On the other hand, the use of AI in the workplace raises concern about job displacement and the need to adapt to new technologies. So overall, it is important to recognize that while Tesla is an interesting and important topic, the real news is that AI is increasingly able to do a lot of our jobs for us, and this has significant implications for the future of work. So why is this relevant? Because I got something to tell you, folks. I didn't write this episode. I didn't write the title. I didn't write the topic. I didn't write anything. I typed, what is a good topic for Tesla video that isn't clickbait? And it gave me answers. This whole video was written by AI so far. Uh, it suggested my topics. It suggested all of it. I just started copying and pasting. Recognize this? That's the script that we just went through. It read naturally, didn't it? That was a first draft. How do I tell the viewer that this is actually a video about AI? Yeah, so there's, it's tricky. I'm a trickster. Um, it sounded good. It sounded natural. 
So I took it all the way. I even said, hey, um, could you <laughs> do me a solid, bro, and tell me what is the best text prompt to generate an AI thumbnail for a video about Tesla AI and renewable energy? Best text prompt. Here you go. I just pasted it in, and uh, this is what it got. This is where it, where it took me. So the title, uh, the thumbnail, of course it's generated by AI, but even the prompts to generate it. We got some good stuff, I think. A little goofy on the car. That's a huge dude. Crossroads. Nice. All of this looks pretty good. Is this sustainable? <laughs> well, you know, chat GPT, this has nothing to do with Tesla or Elon. No, this is through OpenAI. Who founded OpenAI? Does anybody know that? The writing didn't feel like a brain video. Charlie, it didn't. I actually, uh, in rehearsal, read it to my kids, and they s and one of them actually figured out that it was GPT before I got to it, because there was no Brian in it. There was no soul. <laughs> but other channels, ones that already don't have much soul, could absolutely get away with that. And I could always Brian it up a little. It works, man. It's crazy. It's fun. Yeah, of course. This is coming. This level of chat was unimaginable five years ago. Just like self-driving is unimaginable today. The difference is nobody really fought back against this, against chat, against image generation that looks like this. Nobody fought back against that. Maybe they should have. <laughs> but now we've got all these people, we were talking in the pre-show chat, about the FUD, the fear, the uncertainty, the doubt, and how it's all getting a bit out of hand. It's frustrating. There are so many people who eagerly spread misinformation because they don't like Elon. Now, they don't understand that they're part of a machine that is stupid and evil malicious to its core. All the people who stand to benefit from the downfall of one, if not all, of Elon's companies, they have a vested interest in the failure of Tesla. Cruz and Waymo have a vested interest in the failure of Tesla's full self-driving, even its autopilot. Uh, all the other companies with just adaptive lane control stand to lose from Tesla's innovations. We know that. All this is not a surprise. All the energy companies, they stand to lose. So they go out and they say demonstrably false, incredibly stupid things, and it goes unchallenged. There was a video of a car in China where the driver clearly applied the wrong pedal. This was last, uh, last month, November 13th, I think. Driver goes to pull over. He's clearly in one pedal driving. He lets off the gas, his foot is hovering over the gas, he slows down, slows down, and when he wants to stop, he stomps on it. But it's not the brake, it's the gas. And you can tell, because that car takes off, as a Tesla do. He starts screaming through town, pedal to the metal, balls, if you will, to the wall. Well, uh, no, this is, this is autopilot. This is an autopilot malfunction. No, it isn't. Autopilot doesn't floor it, ever. Ever. Well, right, but I just said it's a malfunction. Okay. But the brakes would have to malfunction too. If you touch the wheel, if you hit the gas or the brake, it disengages. Well, right, but it's a malfunction. Right, but the brakes are a different system. The brakes, you hit the brakes, the brakes are hydraulic, the car will stop, even if autopilot didn't want you to. You'd have to fail on both of those at the same time in extremely specific ways. Well, but he was on the brake. You can see the tail light. No, you can't. The tail light wasn't on. The daytime running lights were on, but without that center bar light, there's no brakes. Well, that malfunctioned too. So now we've got a mechanical, a hydraulic, and an electronic failure at the same time in extremely specific ways leading up to this perfect storm of impossible odds. Or, hear me out, 
Guy stomped on the wrong pedal. Pedal misapplication is something that happens 16,000 times a year, according to NHTSA. And that's in the U.S. alone. You're telling me that this is what happened, but not pedal misapplication? The FUD is real. <laughs> the FUD is real. Steven says Tesla does not need a PR department. Yes, it does. It absolutely does. The original justification was that Elon is the PR department. Elon's busy. Elon's not even the CEO right now. The company's kind of running itself, which is great because the executives know what they're doing, but there's no PR department. They still have one in China, which is active. They have one in Germany, which is active. They need one. It is, it is time. So uh, let's get into the Q and A. Let's queue up for the A's, shall we? But let's also mention that uh, the patrons are the ones who keep the channel going. Since we're in overtime, I'm going to go ahead and turn on the heat because it is about 47 degrees in here. And as brisk and refreshing as that is, I'd rather keep my fingertips nice and nice and toasty. We well, uh, there it is. Chance. And uh, there you go. If you want to watch the complete 30 ish minute version, head on over to the second channel, uh, My Tesla Live, where the uh, whole thing goes out each Friday. At 7 p.m. Pacific. Yeah, join in the conversation. Thanks as always to everyone else. Like, subscribe, do the usual thing, and stay tuned, stay juicy, and I can't wait to hear from you clever robots on the live channel.